All right, guys, welcome back to another damn fishing attic video. I hope y'all are having an absolutely amazing week. I apologize that we have not been uploading lately. We had some friends in from out of state with the 4th of July weekend and everything like that. We just chose to take some time off, spend time with family, go fishing with them, uh, and do things like that and not really worry about the cameras, not really worry about having to try and make a video, things like that. So I hope y'all understand but we are going to get back to making videos like normal hopefully every week it is getting that time that hot part of the summer where fishing could get real tough so making videos could get kind of tough but we'll do what we can to make them bring you guys good content but today's video has been highly requested uh it is, this is going to be a how-to snagging video we're going to go over rods reels line weights rigs snagging techniques um, everything I'm gonna take all the most popular questions I have and I'm gonna try and answer all them questions I'm gonna try and demonstrate some of it uh, things like that to really give you guys that are new to snagging or maybe you're you've been snagging for a little bit but it just ain't going the way you thought it would or maybe you still have questions or things like that we're gonna try and cover all that in this video help you guys out so anyway let's just jump right into this video All right, so I, the first thing we're going to cover is rods. Um, there are all different types of rods on the market that will work for snagging. Now, this video is basically going to cover snagging from the bank, not from a boat. Snagging from a boat and snagging from the bank are two totally different styles. You're going to need different equipment. Um, you can get away with different equipment from a boat than you can the bank. Um, so this is going to be for you bank snaggers. Um, when it comes to bank snagging and it comes to rod selection, I like a 10 foot, 12 foot rod. I prefer a 12 myself, but I've snagged with a 10. This is a 10 foot six rod here. This is a 12 foot rod here. Caleb, part, who's part of our group, he snags with a 10 foot. Jordan snags with a 10 foot. My daughter snags with a nine foot. Uh, so you can use smaller rods, but me, myself, I prefer a 12 foot. I see a lot of guys come out and they'll get like an eight foot catfish rod or a seven foot catfish rod. They come out to snag. And the problem with those rods is they're built for catfishing. So when they go to cast, they get about 35, 45 yards out there and that's it. They're usually using a, a catfish rod from Walmart or wherever. They've usually got 50 pound mono on on a 6000 series reel so you don't get that much line on there and they only make it about 40 yards out and i hate seeing it because them fish are generally going to be more toward the middle of the river so you're going to need to get further out there and with a 10 or a 12 foot rod you can cast a lot further let's let's these are hypothetical numbers but let's just say with like uh let's say a walmart tiger because i see those a lot a walmart tiger you're going to cast probably about 35 40 yards that's like about an eight foot rod this 10 foot rod you're gonna cast let's say 50 to 65 yards or more i know guys that could cast more don't get all excited you 10 foot guys that could cast like 80 yards with your 10 foot i know but i'm talking about the average new person into snagging that hasn't spent a lot of time with this rod with this 12 foot rod you're gonna cast 60 to 80 yards and that a lot of times that can mean the difference between being in the fish and not being in the fish being hung up and not being hung up like this spot i'm in right now that you can see behind me um right out there at about 45 yards there's a ledge so i have watched multiple people come down here with those smaller rods and they hit that ledge every time on the cast first pull in the ledge i watched a guy come down here and i felt so bad for him he came down here with a dozen hooks and a dozen weights and he was done in 30 minutes all because he couldn't get out there never hit one fish all he kept doing was getting snagged so that's why i prefer a bigger rod the bigger rods are also going to act like more of a shock absorber those littler rods they're not made to handle these big big fish so when you hit one of these big fish on one of these bigger rods you've got all of this flex in a 12 foot rod you've got all this flex in a 10 foot rod where that little eight foot rod doesn't have it so i could stick this the butt of this rod in my leg I can grab up here, I can lean back into it, I can put pressure on it and crank down on it. With those smaller rods, you're not going to be able to do that. That's why I prefer the bigger rods. Alright guys, now we're going to talk about reels. 
when it comes to reels, to me, I know the old saying again, bigger isn't always better, but to me, when it comes to snagging, bigger is better. Now, there are plenty of rods out there. There are plenty of reels out there. There are plenty of combos that if you're just getting started will work great. Okuma Tundras, Okuma Fat Cats. You can get the entire combo for like 50, 60 bucks. They'll work great. You'll want to upgrade eventually, but they'll probably last you a good season. We've had some of them last two when we were testing them out. Um, but honestly, if you're going to get big into snagging, you're going to do it a lot. I would invest my money in better reels. The Quantums work from Walmart. They're not great reels. They'll work. I've watched, I've got a graveyard of them. We've broke plenty of them. I've got video of plenty of them getting broke. They will work. Plenty of guys use them. But if you're going to get serious about snagging, I would suggest upgrading just so you don't have those issues. I love, now this is, this one has the live liner. This is a Fierce 3. This is an excellent, excellent reel. It's only about 80 bucks. Sometimes you can find them for like 60 online, stuff like that. If you get them without the live liner and stuff, if you're somebody who's going to snag and catfish with it, I would suggest a live liner. Um, I'm not going to go into how it works. I have another video on how it works. Uh, you can look it up, but this Fierce 3, the Fierce 2, great reels. The Pursuit by Pen is a great reel. You have a metal handle that screws in. There's no little, there isn't the little screw holding the handle on. This reel handle is all metal. You're not going to have to worry about the plastic breaking or stripping out or anything like that. You got the aluminum spool. It holds, I mean, well, hell, this one holds... 345 yards of 80 pound braid and obviously the lighter braid you use the more it's going to hold uh, i run a 10,500. if most of you seen that thing will hold like 600 yards of, or 500 and some odd yards of 80 pound braid i never worry about getting spooled with these reels they hold more line they're stronger and the braking system on the drag system is way better those quantums they're good reels, they will work, but the drag system on them is usually what you're gonna blow out first. The anti-reverse, you're gonna blow out. They just don't have the brakes on them to stop some of these big fish. You hit an 80 pound, 60 to 80 pound spoonbill with all them quantums, you'll see, I'll throw a video in here right now of about a 45 pound spoonbill just burning the drag off of one of these quantums as Jordan's fighting it from the ramp. And it's just burning the drag off of it. And that drag was set very tight. With these, I can reach up here. I got one running, crank down on him. We can turn that drag up. It's got a carbon fiber brake system in it. I could turn him with it. Those, it's a little sketchy. And usually you can back the drag all the way down as tight as it'll go, and it ain't going to turn them. It's just going to keep pulling. So these reels, they're going to hold more line. They got better drag system. They got better components. They're a lot stronger. The, this is a Battle 3. These are absolutely awesome reels. They come with the power knob. You can also order the power knobs. So if you're going to get really, really serious about snagging, I suggest upgrading to something, either the pin pursuit, the pin fierces, or the pin battles, you know, and above that, you're obviously, you're not gonna be doing any worse. You're just gonna be getting better, 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 better. So. All right, guys, when it comes to line, I'm a braid guy. Our whole group is braid guys. And the reason we use braid is one, braid is stronger and two, it doesn't stretch. And when you are snagging and you are throwing out there and you are snagging mono, if you've got a, let's say you've got 80 yards of mono out there tied to a five ounce weight and you hit a fish, that mono will stretch. Every time you swing, that mono will stretch. And when you've got your mono stretching and your pole flexing every time you swing, when you actually hit a fish, you're not hitting that fish as hard as you would if you had braid. So there you might have a lot of uh, what we call rolling them, where you'll hit the fish and the hook won't actually stick them. So it ends up rolling them over or it doesn't get into them. Or you'll have a lot of pullouts where the hook didn't get deep enough. So the hook will end up pulling out. Um, you'll have it to where a lot of times some of these bigger fish, when you hit them, they will run upstream. They'll run toward that dam. 
So there may be a point in there where you've got to play catch up. And if you're trying to play catch up, your line goes slack and you have mono, a lot of times you can get that where the hook falls out. With braid, we don't have a, we don't have that problem as much. I'm not saying you will eliminate all those problems completely. You will eliminate the stretch, you will eliminate all of that. We do have hooks fall out every now and then, very 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 rarely. I mean, I can't think of once this season, but I know it has happened. I'm sure it has happened to other people. I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, yeah, but braid's hard to break and everything like that. Braid's really not. We, we carry what's called brake sticks. Wrap that line around that brake stick, walk backwards. 90% of the time, braid will cut into itself. It will literally break right at your knot. Mono, it's just going to stretch until it finds the weakest point and then it's going to break. That could be 30 yards up the line, that could be 20 yards up the line, that could be at the hook, that could be at the tip of your pole. Where braid, 90% of the time is going to cut into itself and it's going to break right at the hook. Other thing with mono, that bigger diameter, you're not going to get as much on a reel. So with the braid, you're going to get a lot more on a reel, you're not going to be worried about getting spooled, you're not going to be sitting there watching that fish run going, oh god, I'm about out of line with this, I'm sitting there going, okay, come on buddy. That's just, that's just the longer fight I'm going to have, the further you run. So anyway, that's why we prefer braid. Again, I know there's the, you know, braid versus mono, braid versus mono controversy. You're always going to hear the guy that, and you've all seen it on these Facebook groups. Oh, I landed an 80 pounder on 30 pound big game from Walmart. Yeah, it, you can. It's, it's not hard. Many of us have done it. When I first started out, I started with mono, but I'm just saying this is why we use braid. This is why we like braid. This is the reason we run it. I'm not saying there's anything against mono, guys. If you want to run mono, more power to you. This is just why we run braid. All right, guys, now we're going to talk about weights and hooks. We're going to cover these real fast um, because there's not a lot of sizes. I mean, you have 8, 10, 12 on your hooks. That's generally what we're going to run, 8, 10, 12. Um, the only time, again, this is more of a bank snagger video, but the only time I've really ever used a 12 is from a boat. I generally like eight to 10. I generally prefer eight. Most everything in this box right here is eights. The reason I prefer eights is because it's a smaller hook. It doesn't do as much damage to the fish. Um, I don't feel it does. I've noticed a difference, um, especially whenever you're snagging like this is summertime. This isn't during the run. There are some big fish out there. Uh, we caught one this weekend that was probably around that 40 pound mark, but there's a lot of little fish out here. You're going to hit a lot of little fish if you come snagging during the summer. And I'm talking those little bitty pup one pound all the way up to 15 pound. And with that eight dot hook, you're not going to have a, you're not punching all the way through them. You're not tearing them up real bad. You're not doing as much damage. And that's generally why we don't snag a lot during the summer. I'm down here to make this video. I'm down here to test a rod, um, things like that. That's why I'm out here, but that's why I'm gonna run a smaller hook. Just so when I hit them smaller fish, I don't really tear them up. And I have caught all the way up to 70, 80 pounders on dot hooks. So, you know, don't think that they're weak because they're smaller, they're great. Now, I will run 10, especially if we're like on a river it's during the run, it's a lot of big fish, not very many small fish. There's a lot of times I will move up to a 10 aught hook just so I can get a little more meat in them. I can get make sure that, you know, on some of them bigger fish, when you get them in the tail or in the side and they want to go, I want to make sure I can go with them and I can hang with them and I'm not going to lose them. So a lot of times I will run a 10 when I'm not as worried about little fish being around. As far as weights go, I'm going to run anywhere from two to five. I don't go over five and I don't go below two. There's just no point. And generally twos, the only time I'm going to run twos is uh, whenever they've got all the gates open and it's really rolling and it's really high. It's really up that ramp. Sometimes them fish are up a little higher. If you run down on the bottom and stuff, you might not hit them where there's been times where we've ran twos and all the fish have been real high and with that two we could throw it out there and we can stay high and we don't and we hit more fish but i usually carry very few twos that's about the only time is when the water's really rolling and it's really churning and the fish are up high that i'm going to run twos generally i'm going to run a four to a five i want to get it as far as i can out there because again we're from the bank 
the further we get out there, the more pulls we're gonna have, the more opportunity we're gonna have to get a fish. And also, I want it to get down fast. As soon as it hits the water, I want it going to the bottom. I don't want to just sit here and wait. So generally, I'm gonna run fours, fives. Most of the time, I'm gonna run fives. All right, we're gonna go over snaggy technique. Now, depending on where you go, depending on time of year, and depending on where you're at in the state, snagging techniques may be different. Now I'm going to get into a demonstration here in a little bit and I'm gonna show you how I snag my technique and everything like that, but I wanna discuss it first. Um, I'm going to swing to the side. The reason I swing to the side is because I feel I have more sweep, I cover more water. When you snag up, let's say I'm snagging straight up, I've got my pole out there and I'm snagging straight up like this. Your weight's doing this. It's coming up, it's falling down. It's coming up, it's falling down. Coming up, falling down. You're only covering that much water, okay? Now, a lot of times when the fish are on the bottom, say I've got fishy here, I'm snagging like that, I might go whoop right over him because I just snagged this area, okay? The reason I snag this way with a sweeping motion to the side is because when I snag, now my weight is doing this. It's staying down lower. It's covering more water. Instead of this, I'm doing this. So now that fish is sitting there. I come across, boom, I'm in him. And you'll, I feel like I hit more fish doing it that way. Also, I don't kill my back. Oh my God, you guys that snag straight up and down, I give you kudos, I can't do it. That kills my back. Not even, I can't even make it through one hole. I, if I cast out there, I can't even make it back to the bank doing that. It kills my back, it kills my arms. I don't see how y'all last doing it. I know there's a lot of y'all out there doing it, especially over at low water. There's such a small area. There's so many people, you, you almost have to snag that way very unless you go way down you're snagging straight up and down and them guys i we went down there we watched them man they will snag forever doing that man kudos to y'all i can't do it that kills my back that sweeping motion is so much easier on your back you're just turning into it you know you you reel up you point your pole at your line and then you sweep through and, and you'll get a rhythm and man boy you could just it, it's almost like a dance it's kind of funny to say, but it's almost like a dance. You just, woof, you know, back and forth. But anyway, there's all different types of ways. This is the way that works for me. This is the way that works for all my guys. All of us pretty much snag the same way. Some guys will snag a little more up, depending on where the fish are in the water column. We're still going to swing, but we might swing up, you know, like that. Uh, John, he likes his to stay on the bottom. You'll watch him. He swings down. When he's swinging, he is he is swinging down. I'm kind of more middle. I just kind of bring mine through the middle. Like I said, everybody has their own technique. Everybody has their own way of doing it. You got to find that way that works for you. You got to find that way that's comfortable for you. All right, now we're going to talk about casting. Casting is a big one I get asked because there's been many, many, many times me and the guys are down here. We're down here on the river. We're over at the ramp and we're slinging halfway across this river or more and guys are like, how do you guys cast that far? And I'm gonna demonstrate it. I'm gonna rig all these up and I'm gonna demonstrate it and everything like that. But again, I wanna talk about it first. It's all in loading your pole. You've got to learn to load your pole. On these bigger poles, if you snap cast them, your tip ain't gonna last very long. You're gonna end up breaking the tip of that pole. You're gonna end up snapping your line. I've seen many a times where guys have sent weights almost over to the other bank because they've snap cast it. It's all about lo loading that pole. You grab that, I like to grab mine at the butt and I like to grab it at the top here above the reel. I'm gonna put my weight on the ground. I'm gonna slowly bring my pole up. As soon as I feel that, as soon as I see that weight and I feel that weight is tight, that line is tight, that weight is tight. I'm gonna slowly come over and then about right here, I'm just gonna rip. I'm gonna rip through it. I'm gonna pull down as hard as I can or as fast as I can on the bottom and I'm gonna shove forward on the top. So you're gonna start out here kind of slow and then, then you're gonna come over fast. What that does is that loads the tip of that pole. That low, you gotta think your pole is like a big spring. 
So when you load that spring up and then you whip it over, when it comes up to the top, it, it flicks it out there. And that's how you will get a lot further out there. And also it's about timing. You've got to learn to time where you let go of that line. If you let go of it here, you're going to rainbow it. You're going to send it way up there. It's going to go, it's going to go high, but it ain't going to go far. You let go of it here, you're going to baseball it. That's going to, it's going to fling straight across real fast. You ever watch Caleb cast? He, he does what I call baseball pitching. When he comes over, he lets go of it like right here. And I mean, that weight will freaking be eight foot off the top of the water and just like beeline straight across it. He can still cast very far doing that, but it's like a bullet going across there. I let go more right here. It gives me some arc that gets it out there and it still goes pretty far, but you got to learn to time where you let it go. Where you let it go is going to make all the difference and how far it goes, loading the pole, making sure you got the pole loaded right and letting it go at the right time will make all the difference in how far you cast, how far your weight goes, how high it goes, everything like that. That, that decides everything. So it takes some time. Come down here on a day like today. There is nobody here. As you can see, I've got the whole place to myself right now. I can do all the practice I want. Just getting a fill for your pole. Come out on a day like today. Go out in a field. Go to a football field. Go somewhere where you're not going to knock nobody out or take nobody's head off. Tie just a four or five ounce weight on and sit there and practice and find that sweet spot in your pole because every pole's got a different action. This pole here, it's a 10 foot six pole. It has a totally different action than this 12 foot. These are two totally different brands. They have different action. So where my sweet spot in my pole might be that will really send it may be different than yours. So go out, get some practice with your pole, test it out, try and figure out where that sweet spot is and you'll get a lot further cast. And also the further you cast, the more pulls you got, the more chance you got of hitting a fish. All right, guys, now we're gonna cover rigging up. I'm gonna rig this one up and we'll end this one up real quick. And then we'll do the casting demonstrations. I'll show you how I cast so you can actually watch it. We'll do some slow-mo, some stuff like that. Um, I'll demonstrate actually how I snag. And there's a lot of fish popping out here. They're running two roosters. It looks like possibly the generator and both pipes. So there's a good chance there's some fish out here. There's a lot of gar popping and a lot of carp jumping. So I'm sure we could probably hit one of them, no problem. But whenever I rig up, obviously um, most of you are already gonna know this, but for somebody that might be new that doesn't, that's never rigged a pole, this is gonna be for you. We're gonna open up the bell and we're just gonna go through every single eye. Nothing new here, all of us have probably done this, but like I said, if you're new, this is for you. If you're not new and you don't wanna watch this, you can always fast forward. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. We are now over 600 subscribers, that's freaking awesome. We're on, we're on our way to that thousand mark. We're almost at 2,000 followers on TikTok, uh, which is amazing. TikTok blew up a lot faster than YouTube, but that's because a lot more people are using that app right now. Another thing, guys, that I didn't cover in the casting portion is line, amount of line on a reel. When you're running these bigger reels, the fuller that spool, the further it's gonna cast. The less line you got on there, it's gotta go over this lip right here. That slows it down, especially on braid. So the fuller you keep your spool, the further it's gonna cast, the better it's gonna cast. Let me grab a weight and a hook real fast. All right, so I got my hook, got my weight. We're gonna pull a loop, as you can see. Here's our line. I'm gonna pull a loop and just tie that loop off. Nothing fancy there. There we go, loops tied off. Take, stick that through the eye. Flip the weight through the hole, drop it down. There you go, ready to go. We're already, weight's already rigged up. Grab your hook, pull another loop. Stick that loop through the eye, bring it right down the shaft. 
start wrapping it again like i've said in my how to rig a snagging hook video the number of wraps is only deciding the length of your your tag in here it doesn't matter you can do it one time you can do it 10 times you can do it 100 times that's up to you pull that tight a couple of half hitches over the barbs and there we go we're rigged up I'm not gonna make you watch me rig this other pole I'll gonna rig this other pole up real quick and I'll turn the camera back on all right guys we're all rigged up now I've got a four ounce weight and a 10 aught hook so what I'm gonna demonstrate is just the casting and the snagging technique I use again you're going to just have to get out there and do it and find the technique that works for you I snag different than John John snags different than Jason we all are similar, but everybody has their own style, their own way of holding the pole, their own, their own way of pulling, everything like that. You just gotta find what's comfortable and what works for you. There isn't really a style or a way that's going to catch you more fish. It's snagging. It's more, there is some skill to it, knowing where the fish are, knowing how deep they are, knowing things like that, where to look for them, things like that. But a lot of it's up to luck. It's getting that hook and to the right spot to hit one. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how I cast. This is a 10 foot six pole. This isn't a 12, we'll cast the 12 next. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set my weight behind me on the ground. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. Let's see, we'll move down here. So hopefully you can see it. I'm gonna set my weight behind me on the ground. I'm gonna point my body to where I want it to go. Set my weight on the ground, I'm gonna bring it up. That was almost middle. This spot I gotta worry about a ledge. So I'm gonna give it about four or five good pulls and then we're gonna burn it in and hopefully we miss that ledge. All right guys, again, I'm gonna bring my weight up. About right there, a little higher. About right there's the line I want hanging off. You don't want that hook and that weight all the way up against that tip. You want some line in between there. You know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set it behind me. Behind me. We'll load it. Load it. And again, that was pretty much about middle of the river. I'm gonna let that hit the bottom. I'm gonna wait till I feel it hit the bottom. And with braid, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel that thud. Tighten up the line, swing through. another thread then I'll go to the 12. All right again I'm gonna set it on the ground load it fling it yeah see that went way way further Set it on the ground behind me. I don't know if you can see that, but that was about halfway. Of a 12 foot between a 10 foot, and what I mean about casting distance and stuff. About the same amount of leader line. Lay it down behind me. Yeah, <laughs> a lot further. That was another 30, 
30, 40 yard, and then that's where we'll probably wrap up this video. I actually stopped that one. I shut the bell on it and stopped that one. And that was still three quarters of the way. All right, guys, so well, that'll wrap up this week's video. I hope that answered some of y'all's questions. I hope that answered or will help some of the newer people that are getting into snagging, things like that. Um, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate. Comment on the video. I can answer them on there. Jump over on Facebook, send me a message, TikTok, send me a message, whatever. We'll do our best to help you out. That's what this channel is about. We wanna help you guys out. We want everybody to have a great snagging season. Um, again, don't forget, share your pictures with us on Facebook. We like sharing everybody's pictures. We'll share them on our group page on, or on our Facebook page. So anyway, I hope y'all have a great week. I hope y'all had a great fourth and hopefully next time we'll see you at the dam.